Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlotthauer here with a very important weather forecast. In this update, we're going to give you the very latest information of this winter storm that's going to bring lots of lake effect snow to the Great Lakes region, including for the northeast with some strong winds and heavy rainfall. We're also going to update you on this big Arctic blast that is going to send wind chill values as low as negative 35 degrees below zero to as cold as negative 50 degrees below zero. In fact, wind Wind chill advisories, wind chill warnings have been issued already for the extreme northern plains of the United States. And then another winter storm this weekend could bring the risk for more freezing rain, snow, and icy conditions across Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and portions of Nebraska. So with that being said, here's a look at the latest ECMWF model, or known as the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting. This is my favorite model, and this is for this afternoon on Tuesday. December the 10th, 2024. And as we look at the map currently, we do have all of this green. That's rainfall going across Georgia, Alabama, southern Mississippi, southeastern Louisiana into West Virginia, Virginia, as well as Pennsylvania and New York. This is going to amplify as we go into the overnight hours, and it's going to become really a big deal for your Wednesday into Thursday as better jet stream dynamics get involved. You can even see it here on our height contours. The 540 line is our average freezing line, and you can see how this really sways into Wednesday morning for your morning commute. All right, so if you're going uh, to work for your Wednesday morning, if you're in Georgia, the Carolinas, if you're in West Virginia, Virginia, um, if you are in Delaware, if you are in Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, you name them all, Connecticut, um, if you are in Massachusetts, if you are in Connecticut, yes, if you are in, say, Nantucket, Rhode Island, Vermont, New Hampshire, even if you're in southern portion there of Alabama, just keep that in mind. Allow extra time to get to your destination tomorrow morning because the rain's going to be coming down pretty good. And we're also going to have some strong winds to go along with the rainfall. So keep that in mind. Allow extra time to get to your destination because the rain is going to be coming down. And also maybe some ice up here in portions of, say, um, if you're in Maine, but it's going to be a brief amount of freezing rain, and then it's going to transition over to rain. But this is when it gets interesting. So by Wednesday afternoon for your evening commute here on the 11th day of December 2024, you can see here for the Northeast, and because of how serious this actually is, we're actually going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see this in greater detail. Let me actually go to the northeast because it's kind of clipped out a little bit. So, yeah, there we go. So you can see over um, much of Maine, it's raining. The winds are strong, and you can see some pretty intense rainfall. These darker green colors indicate rainfall rates on the order of about a quarter of an inch to three quarters of an inch an hour. On top of that, we have some light to moderate snowfall. This is going to be in the mix of all that rain. This cooler air is going to be moving in on the back side, but the moisture is going to be a bit more limited because a lot of this is going to be form uh, is going to be falling within that area of low pressure right along this cold front and this warm front with limited moisture on the back side, but not enough to prevent snowfall. You're going to see some snow, but we're not talking about two or four feet of snowfall. This is not that type of system, but it is going to uh, bring in snow nonetheless. All right. Also, lake effect snow is going to become a big problem. As this system occludes, you can see that pressure dropping pretty substantially. It goes from, say, 1,000 millibars to about 976 millibars by Thursday morning. You can see that for your morning commute. Yes, it's dry for the most part over the eastern seaboard. But if we go to the Great Lakes here, let's kind of zoom in so you all can see this. There will be some um, travel problems, some commute problems. There will be some very heavy lake effect snow over off of Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, Watertown, New York. If you are in Buffalo, New York, just keep that in mind. Lots of lake effect snow for Thursday morning, Wednesday late 
late night once that colder arctic air moves over these warmer lake waters there's instability over these waters so that's gonna uh, come out with some lake effect snow and even maybe some minor lake effect thunder snow as well in some of the bands um, so keep that in mind but yeah lots of snow up here in the lake effect region uh, through Thursday morning and even continuing all the way in beyond that through Thursday afternoon. So your evening commute in some areas here off these lakes could be severely impacted. So allow a lot of extra time to get home from your uh, from your destination or from your origin point. So from work, and then that continues all the way through say Friday morning uh, with some lake effect snow. Okay, so that's the snowy part of the system, but there's also actually, yeah, we'll actually look at, uh, yeah, we could just kind of talk about our next storm system um, for the weekend. So you can see that, that it dries out for the Northeast, but guess what we have? We have another system over the central United States. And not only that, for a lot of you that are watching this from the West too, yes, big storms coming in for the weekend for California, for Nevada, for Oregon and Washington. So a pretty active weekend, unless you're in the Northeast and it's not gonna be active at all. And if you're in the Rockies, not gonna be too bad to start the weekend, but yeah. Uh, we're going to see icy conditions, so some freezing rain problems, some heavy snowfall with that little system, and of course some rainfall to the south. This is a rather weakish system. It's going to have some strong winds with it, but it's not going to be a blockbuster storm where we're going to see feet of snow, um, in, about an inch of ice. No, it's not that big, but yes, there is going to be some impacts here for freezing rain for Iowa for Saturday morning, December the 14th. Okay, and snow to the north of that. Well, I call this type of system is when we have different precipitation types. We have rain. We got some freezing rain. We even got a little bit of sleet there and some snow. This is what we call a Neapolitan storm. If you think of chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry, think of vanilla as rain, strawberry as freezing rain, and chocolate as in snow right so this is kind of how it looks neapolitan look here and you get the different colors the different flavors of ice cream that are going to be falling in different areas so yes a bipolar like system this weekend moving into the middle of the country and then guess what that's not the end of it there's going to be that storm that moves into the northeast by the latter part of the weekend so this is by sunday and then by monday next week we could be watching for another winter storm there's a lot of variability in the modeling, uh, especially on the Euro and the GFS, having two different solutions on this. Um, but it, on the Euro in particular, it wants another big winter storm for the upper portion of the northern plains of the United States. This is not going to be the title of the video. The title of this video will be that big winter storm for the northeast, followed by another storm for the weekend. All right, so not really talking much about this yet since it's about seven days out. But just keep that in mind, possibly a more active weather pattern coming by the early part of next week. So now that we talked about that and got that all out of the way, we digested it all, let's talk about these temperatures because it's going to get a lot colder by the time we go into Wednesday and especially on Thursday, folks. You don't want to even see these temperatures because they are going to be dangerously cold, especially for the Dakotas, for Minnesota, Wisconsin. Going to take the brunt of these colder Arctic temperatures. So let's put this into motion, shall we? Let's look at the um, 12Z model from the Euro. And as we go forward, let's go all the way into Wednesday morning. Yes, overnight temperatures are going to cool throughout the night, as it typically does, but this time because of cold air advection, temperatures, you're going to wake up with day, or morning lows right around zero degrees, some areas as cold as negative 20 degrees to start your Wednesday morning. So yeah, bundle up buttercups because it's going to be a lot colder. And I know it's not on the map here, but Saskatchewan and Manitoba, Canada getting as cold as negative 30 to negative 40 degrees for your Wednesday morning. In fact, extremely cold there. Extreme cold warning has been issued for that area of Canada. And it's going to be that way 
uh, for a while, all the way into Thursday morning. Look at this. Temperatures in northernmost Minnesota and northeastern North Dakota as cold as negative 30 degrees for your overnight temperatures. That is beyond dangerous. And wait until you see the wind chills. We're talking negative temperatures in Wisconsin and northern Iowa for your Thursday morning. That's the big concern with this Arctic air mass. Not just the snow or lake effect snow, but the bittery cold temperatures in the wake of that cold front. And this is gonna persist through Friday morning. Not as cold, more modified as that warmer air comes off the Rockies. So this cold patch of air moves eastward, but still in the single digits overnight and negative temperatures if you're in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Three nights of this, by the way, in, port in some areas. And then you can see by Saturday uh, morning, it really moves out and temperatures do uh, moderate a lot and they do warm up overnight and also during the day back into the upper 20s to lower 30s for your daytime highs. And then there's a colder air moving into the northeast on Saturday and Sunday. Now the wind chill values, this is just a snapshot for Wednesday night into Thursday morning. You can see wind chill values up here in Minnesota, so like north of Minneapolis. Tem uh, uh, wind chill values negative 30 to negative 45 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. Some isolated wind sheltered or uh, strongest wind areas, that's what the wind chill measures, um, could be as low as negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. So that's, um, you could get frostbite in about five or so minutes, probably even sooner than that, maybe in a couple of minutes. So take this seriously. All right. Um, your temperature anomalies definitely below average through Thursday through Friday because of that cold Arctic air mass also across the Great Lakes in the Northeast. Temperature, uh, temperature departures will be about 15 to 30 degrees below normal. In some areas, even 35 degrees below average in Minnesota and Wisconsin for your uh, Wednesday night into Thursday morning. We're gonna see the coldest temperatures there. And then you can see uh, by early next week, temperatures do moderate a little bit. We have temperatures that do warm up above average both day and night. So no more cold air until maybe by the uh, middle of next week, we'll have to see on what happens with this. But I only limit this to seven days for a reason, folks, because of the uncertainty in the models. The further you, out you go in the modeling, the more uncertain the forecast gets. So we wanna be generous with that, okay? Now, as far as your snowfall forecast goes, there is gonna be a lot of snowfall with this winter storm, okay? So you can see for the Great Lakes region, some isolated areas, take note here uh, on the NAM model. This is the North American Meso model. Um, this is the three kilometer. And it's not showing a whole lot of snow here, Probably anywhere between maybe two to five inches of snow is what we're going with. Some of the higher elevations a little more. In fact, if we just go and look at the European model, you can see uh, more minute amounts of snowfall in this area. Uh, and it's well aligned with the NAM model. However, the lake effect snow areas here, that's why this is a big winter storm. You can see a couple of feet of snowfall, some isolated areas, possibly getting close to three feet of snowfall. So keep that in mind. Lake effect snow is gonna be insanity uh, through um, the Thursday and Friday timeframe. So you may be in one area, it, there's no snow at all, and then you go to another area and there's like one to three feet of snowfall. So keep that in mind here over Lake Ontario, Lake Erie. This is for, Lake, uh, for Buffalo. For Watertown, New York, keep that in mind. And then, of course, for Michigan, you can see anywhere between 3 to uh, 20 inches of snowfall. The 3 inches here is over Grand Rapids. If you're in northwestern portion there in Michigan, you see a lot more snowfall due to the lake effect coming off of Lake Michigan. And then up here, uh, that is Lake Huron, Lake Huron, Lake Superior, something like that. You might see as much as about a foot to maybe isolated amounts here in the northwestern most portion of Michigan, up to maybe three or so feet of snow. Again, that lake effect snow is awfully tricky to pinpoint down, but we have a pretty good idea that there will be some spots that do get extreme amounts of snowfall because of that. 
And looking at the zoomed out view of the snowfall forecast for the Great Lakes, you can see over the next seven days, limited amounts of snow, but yeah, where it snows, it's going to be coming down pretty good. Shovelable snow in some areas. Then there's that next winter storm that the models are having a hard time picking out. Right now, we're going with very low snowfall amounts with that one, maybe about a dusting, maybe a few inches, but the Euro being pretty aggressive with that, like other models are. So we'll keep an eye on that to see if it remains a thing in future model runs from the Euro and also from the GFS the American model for the Intermountain West for California. We don't want to forget you too. Some of the mountains here of the Sierra over the next seven days could get a lot of snowfall because of a storm sequence, more rainfall, more flood concerns, strong winds back here too in Washington and Oregon. So yeah, winter wonderland is back and who knows, maybe California, some of those higher elevations could have a white Christmas. We shall see about that. By the way, that's about 300-something hours out before Christmas actually arrives. So, yeah, the white Christmas for some areas is to be determined. Now, as far as your freezing rain goes, who wants to go ice skating in your backyard? Well, that might be a thing in Iowa, also for southern Minnesota for this weekend, since you might see anywhere between about five hundredths of an inch to maybe a tenth of an inch. And yes, a tenth of an inch of ice is enough to cause some power outages and some significant travel disruptions, ice accretion on an aircraft. So if you're an aviation pilot, just keep that in mind. Lots of ice this weekend with that winter storm that is anticipated. All right, that little mini monster, we call it. And as far as your rainfall goes with that first system, yes, a lot of rainfall with this one uh, over the northeast. Anywhere between one to two inches of rainfall is anticipated. And of course, over here for the southeast, you're looking at anywhere between about an inch to a couple of inches. Now, additional storms are expected thereafter through the six and seven day period, especially for California and Southern Oregon might get anywhere between about three to almost six inches of rainfall versus the Northeast actually for the Midwest here might get an, a more additional rainfall due to passing weather systems. But yeah, overall kind of dry out here in the Midwest and the Great Lakes on an overall spectral versus the Northeast getting more rain and the West too getting more rain in the forecast. Now, just to keep this short, this look at the 500 millibar jet stream. And again, we've talked about this over the last few videos. In fact, over the last week that this big dip in the jet stream is gonna bring in that colder Arctic air. And you can see this, this flow coming in out of the Northwest here, then it curves around and it pulls Southwest over the Eastern seaboard into the Great Lakes. All right, this is a pretty dynamic situation and you can see so dynamic that this becomes a negatively tilted trough. So you can see a very strong barrel clinic um, jet stream energy, Vortmax moving over the Northeast. This is going to help to lift those parcels from lower levels and bring and spit out a lot of moisture with it. So in the form of snow where it's cold and where it's not cold enough in the form of rain. And there's going to be a lot of it here for the Northeast. And that's because, again, this jet stream is going to be very strong. And then by the weekend, that pulls out, followed by another short wave. And this is that one that could bring us the next round of maybe some freezing rain in some areas, maybe some light dusting of snow and some rainfall to the south. We're going to see how the model handles this, but pretty much uh, well set in stone now that another winter storm for the Midwest could cause problems, followed by another, well, not really another one, later down the road maybe, but for the Pacific Northwest and for the West, we could see a much stronger system for California uh, with more rain, wind, and uh, high elevation snowfall. Now, if you found this video really helpful, detailed, and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get the latest weather information near you. Hit the like button if you did enjoy today's video, and also leave a comment in the section below this video. Let me know what you, your thoughts about this video are. Did you like the video? Did you not like it? Please let me know in the comment section below this video. And also, of course, stay tuned for the next video that should be released tomorrow. I'm going to try to upload as often as I can, as long as work permits me to do so with my other job. That's going to do it. Thank you for watching.